Yo, Corey G Fitness.com members. G, -G, 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 G Unit Roundtable Episode 2. And uh, I think we, you know, set a good background for everybody on episode episode one. But one thing I've talked about for years, right, that's been a heavy part of my just content has been the why, the purpose, the kind of how I became a maniac. And so obviously you guys were drawn to the craziness, stayed in it got your own version of it and I think it'd be really cool for everyone on the site to understand more about you guys why either what you were mad about as you were younger of why you searched out to be around guys like me why you're you know in business for yourself um, anything that can link what is now separated you guys from the pack because I think that's the real fucking the realness shit <laughs> that people need to know because look that is what what makes me different from everyone else. I was able to tap into it, you know, execute it, grab on it when, you know, there's heavy perseverance in my life. And that's the fire that has never changed. And so I think understanding that. And so, you know, just round table in that, I think it'd be highly valuable for people to say like, oh, shit, like Cole said something that, you know, that kind of sparked. Like, why am I not using that in my life to, you know, to uh, push myself more forward or something that either any of you guys say. So. I'm going to throw it to Trey first. There we go. Because I know he wouldn't. There we go. He was thinking I'm throwing it to Danny, but I'm throwing it yep. to Trey. <laughs> so, Trey, man, a few words from normally behind the camera, in front of the camera. Nah, tell, tell me what comes to mind when you hear that, Trey. Um, You know, honestly, to sum it up, I just never wanted to be like my dad. Yeah, real yeah. talk. Sum it up. I um, can, hey, I, <laughs> I vibe with that, bro, but go ahead. Yeah, man, Um, multiple time convicted felon. Um wasn't really a big part of my life. I mean, he he lived with us for a, a couple of uh, length, lengthy periods of time, and I stayed with him also as well. But, um, you know, just from what I've seen from him growing up, you know, live, from living with him for a little bit, um, rekindling our relationship a little bit a couple years ago and being able to dive a little bit deeper into his mind. But, you know, honestly, when I had the opportunity to do that I and I got to dive a little deeper, he, honestly, I just saw all the excuses that he had you know and mm -hmm. it just gave me a more more of a reason to honestly never be like him <laughs> you know what's so fucking crazy trey at 19 years old you're talking about diving deeper into your parent like a parent's mind mm -hmm. do you know how like crazy that sounds probably to people like the thought process but when you're forced to especially when you want something different and you start to think like that and i, I even <laughs> shared with trey the other day when i was talking about my dad you know, he's passed away like 10 years ago. I wish I would have thought like this earlier in my mm -hmm. life. I just didn't because I would have loved to dig in. Now that I think back, I'm digging in retroactively and I understand the same things in my own way that you kind of said. But it's like, you know, basically you can take a positive from the wrong example, too. You yeah. saw exactly what that path would lead. Yeah, ex exactly. I mean, I saw exactly what the path would lead to. And, you know, unfortunately, at a time in my life, I kind of saw my pa saw myself going down a similar path. You know, there was a time in my life where I was doing and selling a, a lot of different drugs. And, um, you know, I kind of saw myself start to go down that path. And, you know, when it really clicked was as I was seeing myself go down that path, I, I had the opportunity to sit down with him for dinner one time. And, you know, he kind of came up with all these excuses about on you know, why he sold what he sold, why he did what he did, you know, and, you know, it kind of just clicked to me in my head that one time, like, you know what, like, if I continue to do what I'm doing, I find my, I'm going to be on that same exact path. And I, I see, I see the damage mentally that it's done to not only me, but to my mom as well, to put her, to put ourselves in that situation. And it just, I told myself I never, never, ever wanted to be like that. So it basically gave you like the clarity and the closure to basically move on and do something that you really wanted yeah, to do, right? Pretty exactly, much. yeah. Some, something like, that I wanted to be happy doing, for sure, yeah. Yeah, so it kind of gave you some peace of mind, probably, a little bit. Yeah, a de definitely a little bit of peace of mind, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's definitely a, a couple other things I would I would love to figure out, you know, but uh, I think I, I think I got enough closure that I needed to, <laughs> to, to come up with well, my why. When you have a parent yeah. that's like that, it, it's so open-ended. Yeah. Because when you're, especially when you're a kid, you don't understand why why dad ain't around or why he does the things he does. And because we put our parents on pedestals, they're just people, man. They make all kinds of mistakes, right? But still, when they don't learn from their mistakes, they keep repeating them. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the, the hardship that it puts on the family, you, you start as you get to be older, you're like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. yeah. That, and that has to be how, and, and as you dug in, you're like, this guy ain't going to change. 
No, uh, you, I mean, you know, you do, you want him that's, to. That's the fact, yeah. He's not, not going to. I used to think that with my old man. Like, he would get, like, better from time to time. Mm-hmm. And then now, then you'd, like, let you'd let up and be like, oh, and then hurt again. It's just like. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can, I can right? count on, the, on, hand, on my hand a handful of times that that happened. Yeah, and it's, and it's and as a kid, man, it's the fucking worst, bro. Yeah, but it's it's crazy, though, because as you're growing up, you know, when you're little, you don't really, you don't really see those things, to be honest, you know? Yeah. Like, um. You know, I've I've never really honestly shared this with many people, but to be honest, one time when he was back in my life for a little for a short period of time, you know, thing things started to seem kind of going well again, and um, you know, one time uh, we got, we got in a little bit of an argument, and it ended up uh, being a little bit of like a physical abusive situation with a parent, mm-hmm. and basically, you know, after <laughs> after the, I was only in eighth grade at that time, and you know, that's when it kind of clicked, you know, when when you're <laughs> when you when you're you know physically abused by someone that's supposed to love you. <laughs> yeah, that's real talk. The um, the other thing, Trey, is like that break in the cycle. Mm-hmm. People fall into it, which you were starting to fall into. Yeah. What really – was it just that one or two occasions that were like, wait, I'm about to repeat this? Mm-hmm. Because all you got to do is get caught once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with yeah. what things you were having on mm-hmm. you, and the rap sh- sheet starts. Yeah. And then it starts, and obviously we don't even – the how once you're in the system you're fucked i never wanted to be a part of the system you're fucked <laughs> i mean, never never wanted to be i mean I've, i see what it did to my dad you know like for example he's been convicted so many times that you know family members have to warn me that i, sh- I shouldn't even physically see him in person because i could end up you know ultimately being wrapped up in it whether guilty we, by it association could, exactly yeah. it could be as simple you as could ra- be just going out to lunch with him we could be out at lunch and you know a, a cop walks in and sees him and know, knows that he's been in some shit and yeah like like that my life could be flipped upside down yeah was this like purely like um maybe not purely but like did you recognize a lot of this stuff yourself and made like the conscious decision to move on or did you have like a support system or someone you kind of talk through things with so that that's a one what that's one of the other things that was a huge issue with it was you know honestly I didn't really have a huge support system with it because I mean my sister you know she's been through a lot of the similar things that I've been through with my dad as well and so you know I kind of had her to talk to a little bit with but at the same time you know me and my sister we don't really live close to each other so you know the only opportunity we really have to talk is through text and phone calls so there's not really you can't really accomplish as much through that and then you know also, it kind of seems like, uh, you know, not to put out my family's dirty laundry, but a lot of people on my dad's side, you know, they, they tend to take his side because it's their child, you know, and yeah, it's, their bro- it's their brother, it's their sister. So, you know, when when they look at me and they say, I don't want to be associated with him whatsoever, they kind of they kind of look at me like as I'm the bad person. Sure. So there's been a lot of family issues to have to do with that as well. And um. But I when mean, you can't t- think outside of yourself, Trey, or yeah. not you outside, but them being outside, that's a natural reaction because people don't go in these these thought processes like you're doing at such a yeah. young age. People do not think that way. Yeah. yeah. So they only <laughs> see the surface. Oh my gosh, exactly. Trey should respect him and be like, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's like comical when you think about the reality yeah. of what they're saying. But in and then the other thing is when you throw something at it like that, they're like think you're talking down to him or think you're yeah. so fucking smart you're not gonna win is my point <laughs> yeah you just have to do with what you're doing yeah. is manage the situation keep yourself out of harm's way and you just know what time it is exactly the just, problem is i used to try to think there was going to be a different time mm-hmm. there's never going to be a different time that, yeah. that, that, yeah. that i think <laughs> that's the hardest part and rachel deals with this with her mom it's like she'll be good for a while and then you mm-hmm. let your guard down and it's like you you want so much for them to be who you want them to be yeah it just I just don't know anyone that ever really then is. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, right? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I mean it just but what you know, whether you have kids or not, you if you end up having children one day, you'll know exactly what not to do. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you that <laughs> that's fact. that is a fact. Yeah. So I honestly think my dad taught me a ton of mm-hmm. good things because there's exactly the things that I just dislike so much that I'll never fucking do. Yeah. Not even if it's completely putting me out or how much I don't want to be. Like, I just remember, wait a second, this is some shit that used to make you mad. I don't care how out of the way this <laughs> feels right now. Yeah. You just have to do it. You know, yeah. so respect, bro. That's good. Mm-hmm. Danny. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's be slightly different, I guess. Uh, uh, that's part of why this podcast yeah. is yeah. so great. I guess for me, um, a lot of it, I mean, I was fortunate enough to have, I guess, strong parents, mom and dad in the picture Mm -hmm. all the way through till today, pretty much. But, you know, grew up in a suburb, southeast side of Columbus, Pickerington. 
Um, so basically, you know, had the conventional path my entire life laid out. Like I played, you know, competitive baseball since I was nine. So like that took up like a huge chunk of time. Didn't have the healthiest habits in the world mm -hmm. <laughs> along with a lot of the people I was around. So just was a product of my own environment there. Um, but then fast forward to college, went to Capitol to play baseball. Um, you know, it's getting to the tail end of the season. I'm like, do I even want to, you know, invest this time anymore? Like, is it really worth it? I'm like, I'm not going to the league or something like that. Sure. So, um, you know, always thought I was going to be like an accountant. I know I talked, we talked about that a little bit. You which, and Cole accounting firm. I don't even know why, sure. but it was like a <laughs> idea so ingrained. Funny. Just for not because no I'm hating on any accountants. I, I love my no, accountant, but yeah. Danny just doesn't seem like he's an accountant. But go ahead. Yeah, so got to the tail end of the season and they made the decision that, like, this was it. This is the last year. Is that the first time you kind of uprooted the traditional path? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it all started, originated right then and there pretty much. Yeah. That was the, the tipping point because it was like, I don't know. It was like filling to the brim, and then like I had to like make a decision of like there was like this list of things that like you always want to do but you never do, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, triathlons being one of them, and so pretty much at my peak I was around two ten, and like not a good two ten, <laughs> like kind of look like you weigh two ten now well, you weigh yeah, fucking one eighty yeah <laughs> well, that's good so maybe it should be DannyFitness.com. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> but uh. Well, it's funny because I was an offensive lineman in, in high school, so you could tell a small. <laughs> you wait, Cole, wait, you were? We got the yeah. eggs, right? What position? Yeah, I thought you get a kick what, out of that. What, what position? Guard. You were a guard. Yeah. What were you? I was a center. These motherfuckers. Five eight, one eighty. Yeah, <laughs> we were tiny. I, mean, I was the made smallest fucking speed, person on the field like, at all times. Uh, we're definitely the skill players here, Trey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I put myself in that category, you know. <laughs> the athletes. Oh man. Please go but, ahead. Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, I was, like, 210 at the height, like, right after baseball, and I'm, like, I was, like, pissed off. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, like, this is bullshit. Like, I hate, like, feeling, like, groggy and, like, just, like, no energy and just fat <laughs> pretty mm -hmm. much. So, like, that was, like, you know, the tipping point for me and then just went all in. I had a, you know, friend, Ross Hartley. He, he actually lives in Granville now. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was competitive in triathlons. I wasn't trying to win. I was just trying to do triathlons. Sure. Um, but basically went from 210 to 168, like, just, like, sl slash it off. I didn't even change a whole lot about my diet or whatever. And then that's when I started to – that's when I came across old school. Do you think, Danny, real quick, do you think mm -hmm. because you mentioned it quickly about your family habits, do you think seeing whether it was food or activity or whatever within your family made you go to that extreme? Yeah. For sure. Like, it wasn't even just, like, immediate family, but, like, when you get into, like, the extended family and the gatherings and mm -hmm. stuff like that, it just – it still is to this day, like, an accepted thing. Like, it's like I'm not I'm not about that, you know? Yeah, yeah, Like, I'm just not going to – and now they know that, like, <laughs> I'm not going to just, like, eat this yeah. shit just because. The, I'm like, the discipline that you were, you know, searching for wasn't happening, essentially, immediate family. So yeah. it was like, okay, I, I need to change some things. Yeah, and there really was nobody that was – in that role at all yeah like everyone was kind of you know along the same lines so pretty much took the weight off got to old school um and then it was a body composition game that's when like the diet part came in uh the way that you trained kind of changed my body completely uh with, obviously with volume and then fucking i got smaller <laughs> <laughs> well the seriously the volume changed everything uh for me and then it kind of merged into like the crossfit weightlifting world mm. so uh but yeah i mean especially to all the people that come into the site or existing members like like just trust in the system it's gonna take time like literally i started the very first thing i started was in 2011 so it's 2020 now yeah and i'm by no means like you know a bodybuilder or anything like that like in peak condition but like yeah made some positive changes and it, it bleeds into everything in your life not just food I was say I want to dig a little deeper too, Danny. So like, your now your dad has his own business, mm -hmm. um, and obviously is an entrepreneur to some degree. I mean, he's owned his own garage company for a long time. Twenty five so like, years. Yeah. So seeing that, but I've never, I never really, uh, even though he's been successful, we never really talked a whole bunch about his entrepreneurial path. So it was like mm -hmm. that's something you looked at, and then we're like, yeah, I want to follow that because you were very traditional mm -hmm. up to that point, which most entrepreneurs didn't. Uh, your dad didn't go to college, did he? No, he had, he went to a trade school. So there you yeah. go. So he had his own path too. So it's like, how how big of a role did that kind of play? Uh, 
it wasn't a big role at first, and then it definitely kind of switched okay. for sure. Once I, as I got closer to, uh, you know, college and stuff like that, he's, I mean, he started in 95 in our first house in the basement. And I like vividly remember that. I remember the old trucks they used to have when sure. they took out. Um, so like seeing him progress from there to like an office and then they bought their own building and like housing and everything. And then like, actually being in the trenches with his workers too played mm -hmm. a part too sure because i'm like yeah i'm not about to do this shit you know i want to be the guy telling them what yeah of course to do so um i think that played a you know a big role and then when, especially when i went into like the corporate world i was like yeah this isn't for me i gotta you know i gotta do something here <laughs> and that that really kind of forces you into a situation otherwise you're gonna be stuck yeah which so many danny sounded like do. he hated his life every day i called him when he worked at nationwide yeah. <laughs> I think the best part about it was when I would literally get out of the queue <laughs> and yeah. I would take your call and I'd walk, like walk away from my desk. Yeah. I'm like, cause I just, cause I didn't, it's not that I didn't care. It's just that I knew I was on my way out. Yeah. Um, but of course. yeah. How about so. you, Cole? Me? Honestly, like kind of like, kind of like you, it was, uh, I was just fucking tired of my situation. Like growing up in Bellsville, which is like the same size as like where yeah. you grew up. Like either there was two paths. There was either one you go to school like to become a teacher or something like that. You go into the coal mine or you work on cars or you like do some sort of trade. And I just knew, I knew from a young age that that just wasn't fucking me. Cause like all my friends would go out, they would ride four wheelers, do mudding. And as a kid, like I was like super introverted. Like mm -hmm. I didn't, I played sports, but like it, it wasn't like my thing. I think I just, my parents put me into it just because that's what all the other kids yeah, are doing. Of course. So, uh, I knew like at a young age that, you know, that's not really what I do. And I was like, so I knew I fit out different at a young age. So I really, I just spent like most of my time inside just like by myself. Cause I had, uh, I have two siblings, but they were like, they're much older than I am. So I was basically just like a, like, uh, Single child. Only, child. Yeah, only child basically. So I spent a ton of times just in my room, just like by myself. And that's whenever I started playing video games, which like whenever I started playing video games, it was the first time I ever felt like, you know, I was, like, really passionate about it. So, like, I ended up, like, making YouTube videos. Like, that's pretty much how I, like, learned what I'm doing now. But I knew then that, like, this is what I want to do. And I just, like, stuck out from everyone else. So, and I knew that if I kept going where I was, like, I, I just didn't want to, fall, like, fall into the trap of, like, so staying there. so easy to there. do, bro. And then, like, at the time, I think it was, like, sixth grade or something like that, my parents were, like, going through, the, like, a divorce. So, like mentally it was just like really fucking with me and I remember like my dad and like mom like arguing with each other and like shit all the time and like I just remember like there was a definitive point where like they were yelling each other like hard across the room and I just like literally told myself like I never want to fucking act like that again mm. and then so at that time in sixth grade like I was like super overweight too so like my confidence was like really low so like there was just a ton of shit going on like mentally that I just had to figure out for myself and it wasn't until about, like, eighth grade, whenever I started to get more mature and, like, started to really process what was, like, going on around me, like, I started to, like, mature a little bit, so I started to, like, my dad's genetics, like, started to come out with me, and I fucking fell in love with, like, sports. Yeah. So football was, like, the main one, and honestly, it was just because I love fucking hitting people. I think it was, like, me <laughs> taking out that aggression, sure. and I, it was something I was good at. I was really fucking good at hitting people. Yeah. So that, and then going into it I was like you know honestly like I might have a shot like like yeah. this might be my pathway because I got out of video games I was like thinning down like I looked like pretty good for like an eighth grade and my confidence was back to the roof and that's when I fell in love with the weight room and like I'm not even joking you I like stuck out like a sore thumb because I didn't want to do anything else besides literally fucking lift weights and like take creeds that's all I wanted I to do I understand that thought that's all I wanted to do <laughs> so it, it wasn't until <laughs> And at the time, like... I just know, want to lift weights and take creatine. That's, all, that's literally all I wanted to do. And, like, and being in Bellsville, you know, my house was, like, it's smaller than my college apartment, like, right now. Like, yeah. literally so small. And I was, like, my parents, like, there was no way they were going to afford for me to go to college. Like, there was, like, really no opportunity for me. But I was, like, you know what? If I fucking keep working in the weight room and like starting to really like hone my craft like sports wise I could probably like go play like college sports and like earn a scholarship so my entire 
like college career basically was just me trying to get as good as possible to like go and play college sports and end up getting an offer and it never really it never really got to that point but I was like so determined to change my fucking situation and make sure that after high school was over I had an opportunity to go out and like fucking do whatever I wanted and just to make sure that you know my kids like didn't have to come to me and ask for like sports equipment which I had to do to my parents I, I needed like new pairs of cleats or something like that and they like looked at me and told me like I like I literally can't buy you that yeah like you, like, you can't do it so um I was like fuck like I don't want my kids to experience that ever like I want to make sure that like you know their house is bigger than a college apartment sure. and that I can afford all this shit 740 boy and it was just it I was just hear the, it Cole. yeah it was just the fact of like I was so determined to get to that spot and just by doing that you know mentally I had to fucking shape myself into like becoming so dialed in and laser focused cuz I literally I would go out after football practices and like do all these special drills because I actually got recruited for a linebacker. I wasn't like I was a good center, but like linebacker <laughs> was like yeah, was what I was about. Linebacker. Yeah. And I would like I would study Luke Keekly twenty four seven. I would only listen to like anything that you had to say mm-hmm. and then I would I was following Mike Thomas at the time and that was the only three people that really stuck out in my mind that I would follow because I knew what the fuck they were about and they mm-hmm. were kinda on the same mission sure. as me. So you know, I never, I never got a college scholarship, but I had the opportunity to go visit Purdue. They sent me like uh, free game tickets. I got to go visit uh, Cincinnati. I got to go to OU, and then I had a bunch of, I had like D two schools offer me like walk ons, mm-hmm. and then I had like, there was like Princeton, like all these fucking like. Uh, Ivy League, yeah, Ivy League yeah. schools like reaching out to me. I was like, I there's no way. So you had some school. opportunities. I had the opportunity, yeah, but it got to the point where I was like done playing football. Like mentally, I was just like, you know, it's not me. Like honestly, after sports, my body was so beat up because I was like so small the entire time. Mm-hmm. That I was like, I just love fucking lifting weights. That that's the only thing that stayed constant throughout this. So then it came to the point where I had to choose either to not go to school. Or, like, go local and, like, try to do something or just, like, go off somewhere. And, actually, I almost thought about, like, going to, like, fucking some, like, southern school or something like that just to literally start, like, an entire new chapter. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I had, the op- like, I had the opportunity to go to Ohio State and Newark for super cheap. Basically, since I was so poor, like, my college was essentially paid, paid for. Paid for, yeah. So, like, I, I had to do that and, like that's essentially where I'm at today. Like no matter what, I was just literally trying to like put myself in a better position to that. So that way my kids never had to fucking go through what I did. Well, what we was talking about, thanks for sharing that Cole, the, um, the Joe Burrow, why I think he's going to mean so much to where, you know, that area of where we're from or where he's from is because of that exact thing. Like you, at least at some point could at least look to me because I was a cat that had almost your identical situation and got the fuck up out of there. And, but dude, I, I was always searching for who the fuck am I going to look up to? That's why I think it's so important. Joe's going to play such a role for guys like in that, in that area, yeah, bro. It's going to be, or any parts of the Appalachia type of areas. Like we just didn't really have anybody like that. So, you know, hearing that I, it makes sense why you want, you was trying to fuck with me yeah. because the situation was so, you know, basically almost identical. It's pretty cool. You know, so I, I love about, and I learned from every podcast I've been on for a period of time when it was me and Mo for a long time or me, Mo and John or me and John, like all of that. We're not going to talk about this guys just sitting around like on a normal day. Yeah. You know, it's hard to share things like this, but I'll tell you what, there's a therapeutic like level to it that the rest of the day you guys are going to feel like completely different. Yeah. And I got to go through that for four years, you know, on business and biceps. And it was like my own therapy sessions. Yeah. Not to mention I was teaching at the same time. But as you start to like say these things out loud and they feel emotional or you've never said them before, you're digging in there. It's like, fuck. Like that. But see, most people never search like this. Yeah. That's how you become, I think, just a better person and, and the people that you all want to be, you yeah. know, and what I, who I want to be. And, and I can identify so much with Cole because, you know, that um, not being able to have those like basic things, especially like in that like kind of coal mining steel worker type of area. And it's like you see 
a lot of your uncles and the friends and and they don't like what they do they work so hard i wanted i remember thinking to myself like the work ethic is so amazing but if you guys could just be able and not everybody can do this i get that this is like you know my wishful thinking i was like man if my dad could have put that work ethic into something he loved what could have came out of it but that wasn't taught there wasn't thing or you know any any same i don't know i just it was just i just kept coming back to how do i apply this hardcore work mentality to something i just unbelievably like to do and then when the stuff that comes up is challenging i know i'll be able to get through it but it's like i was just tired of watching people be miserable you know and it, it wasn't like they um were slack or like are they didn't didn't want to take risks i just think that the, the resources and just what i saw just wasn't they just thought this is the path this is what two generations have done they don't break the cycle they don't want it more it's just easier to be comfortable it's hard it's hard to do yeah. it took it's going to take me a lifetime to completely change it and same with you guys it, it's not it doesn't happen in five years or ten years it's going to be like a 30 or 40 year process for me to <clears> completely <throat> fucking change it yeah. I mean, it's, it's I can, fucking hard. Yeah, I can speak to that part just because, like, especially on my mom's side of the family. I mean, first of all, it's like <laughs> compa- compared to the situations you guys went through, I, I feel like I was like in an insulated bubble mm-hmm. almost in like suburbia, Ohio, you know. Yeah. So like on my mom's side, like swear, like <laughs> I don't even know how many everyone's a nurse or a firefighter or something like that. Like literally my my brother. My two cousins and their dad, my uncle, are all firefighters, mm-hmm. and then like a couple of my aunts are all nurses. So like, it was always ingrained, you know, the job security like of the of the medical field was just sure. drilled. Which is head. true. It's yeah, there. which is true. But yeah. like, um, but it gets you to just go along with the conventional path, and like that happened to me like forever, <laughs> pretty yeah. much. And you just kind of accept it for whatever reason. So you never take well, out. No like, one's ever challenging it around you. You're never challenging it, and you never z- like zoom out to actually like l- look at the big picture of everything. Yeah. So and like, once again, that's not bad. Yeah. It just but isn't for everybody. And you don't even know. I don't know. You don't fully understand what's actually available to you out there. Like yep. that. That was kind of like something that I experienced. And you know, again, I keep referring back to 2011. But like when I when I reached out to you and started hanging out with you, and then like. Like I'll open just, some motherfuckers' brains. Just, no, yeah. <laughs> just asking you for an internship. Like, I literally remember we're sitting in his office, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, like, legs over the chair, and we're, t- we're coming up with workout names. Like, the most <laughs> douchiest names you could ever think of. And the ones Cole was doing in high school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, ones exactly. I, the ones I wrote down in the little spiral notebook. Like, I still have them. So, we're sitting there making workout names, and, like, that kind of just opened the door. And, it, you know I mean, in a way, like – you're like a second father figure to me yeah. because like slash mentor because you, you know, you would challenge like things that I was do or, you know, or give me challenges. Sure. Um, but it was like complete mind, sh- you know, mindset shift. And then that really just got the ball rolling and then it started to pick up some momentum. So, and it changed the course of my life completely. I think I like, that's probably a lot of my spot for guys that are around me that are in your guys's age group because once again, when you can see under the hood of something, mm-hmm. it just makes it way less scary. Yeah. Impossible. And if you're in an insulated bubble or if you have a very, you know, strong, tight-knit family or something like that, don't be afraid to, to challenge the, you know, ideals that are, you know, against or, or going with the, the lane of track. That can have its own set of problems. See, I didn't have anybody yeah. because I didn't have – I had a close-knit family, but no one was like, oh – you got to do this. You can't do that. So I never really had, cause I think my family was like, I'm just glad you're fucking like trying to be positive and go do something <laughs> like they, they didn't, I mean, they would just support because they blindly didn't even really understand what I was doing. Yeah. I mean, they just didn't. Yeah. Some of them was just like, that was all they know. Yeah. Um, some of them were more, you know, outspoken about it than others. My parents weren't really that outspoken, probably more of my mom, but now it came from a motherly yeah. concern over protection sure. place. But, um, but yeah, there was a few few family members that were more outspoken, and then like you just get to a point where you just don't care <laughs> because like you see what you're doing and it's producing the result that you want it to produce. I haven't cared like, since about ninety eight. <laughs> <laughs> since ninety eight, <laughs> I would say yeah. I cared the the first year I stayed home 
and everybody thought I was a fucking loser because I went to community college. I fucking hated that so bad. Yeah. And I, it was good for me because staying home that one year after high school and then almost falling into the things Cole referred to from our area and then just the way people would react when I would tell them <laughs> that I'm the – I mean, I was working from – I was going to school from 8 to 12 and working from 1 to 10 stacking lumber. I'm like, how am I a fucking loser right now? What, because I don't want to go $20,000 in debt and go to Ohio State? Like, I was like, it, it just fucking pissed me off. Dude, I think that, first off, it's going to sound funny, but when when Michael Jordan did his, I've watched this speech probably a hundred times. He did his Hall of Fame speech, and he called out every motherfucker that pissed him off. I mean, it was actually kind of weirdly mean, but I identified it with, with it so much, and I don't hold that much hate, maybe like he does, <laughs> but it was very similar that I remember all, it took all of those things, though, all of those feelings because it's such a harder path because it's not just traditional mm -hmm. and that I don't know what's going to come up tomorrow and a risk I take could fucking fall flat. It, and it's like, it takes all of those pieces from it, family, from the outside, the way you people perceive, like sometimes I manufacture it. Maybe sometimes it's true. Maybe sometimes it's even more true than I want to believe from some people, but it, I had to use it all because the first person that does the change is gonna is gonna shoulder the most it's gonna be the hardest ag's set of opportunities are completely different from re the resources alone literally anything he wants to do i know somebody probably even in gaming yeah. i'm not even into it but i'm sure i can figure i'm sure i know somebody you know what i'm saying so it's like think about that for a second none of our families had fucking any resources like that y'all's resources are, are already exploded past what our parents were even close to from what you guys are doing right now so it's like you start to understand that when you forge that path, though, you can't worry about what, why they don't understand. They're just never going to understand it. Yeah. And then now what you're starting to see is a little bit older, representing the 1.5 dog and, <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> white picket fence guys at 29 years old, is that they might still not understand it, but the respect is probably changing. Oh, for sure. Well, I, it was funny. Yeah. Once that started to happen, like when they finally like kind of just accepted it all, like oh he does this stuff, like and they just kind of let it let it go. But yeah. but yeah, I mean a lot of it, um, I guess like with like why, I mean one of the you know aspects of it is like this is just an example. It's not necessarily it, but like if my kid has a baseball game mm -hmm. at like three o'clock, like I want to be able to go to the baseball game no matter which what. is happening for me on Thursday. Yeah. My son has a game at two p.m. Exactly. Or if I want to coach, let alone coach the team, like I want to be able to do that. Yep. And that's one of the reasons why I strove to to have a remote, you know, a remote job or in working with you. And we've talked about this at length. I mean, I remember we were FaceTiming in Hawaii when I was in Hawaii. And yeah. Like, you I told him I don't give a fuck where he lives. Yeah. It's like so like as long as he does his shit. Yeah. Exactly. So. <laughs> I mean, when your boss or business partner kind of says that, like, that's the freedom of you deliver, I'm good. Yeah, and you don't have to, like, constantly worry about someone mic micromanaging you. <laughs> like, that's like, I'm not going to say anything thing. unless you super screw it up. Yeah, unless you're totally, yeah. <laughs> unless you're a chode meister. Yeah, I was waiting for that. Trey, what are you thinking over there? You got a lot of thoughts going on, huh? Uh, wh which way do you want to take this? I think um, <laughs> maybe just the evolution that you've seen, even just in the last two years of, like, your path. Like, people starting to understand it or asking more questions like family that you know you still interact with your dad's probably never going to really understand it but mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like have you seen like a shift at all or still people kind because you're the youngest of the group or people still kind of like why is trey like quick college and what the fuck's he doing it's still a majority of the why yeah <laughs> yeah um basically other than i would say my mom because you know other than other than my mom, you know, I honestly, I haven't even, I'm not close enough with my family. Honestly, I haven't really even shared what I, what I do with anybody. Yeah. No one even knows. <laughs> no, I'll, no, I'll tell you most this people don't, Most people don't even, most people don't, even, most yeah. people yeah. don't even know like what, what do. I do for yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> my wife can't even tell people what I do half the time. Like on, it's like, it's like they're, they're confused. You know what I'm saying? By oh, a little crotch. Come on, dude. <laughs> you got to really flex like that on the crotch rocket. Joe, you're going to say something cool. Oh yeah. I just I just had a question for Trey. Go like ahead. at that like at your age whenever like you know you started to make these decisions, were you like pissed off or like were you just like were you like upset about your like how you felt or um were I you would angry say about it? I would say growing up I was always one of those angry childs, you know, I would 
<laughs> there's so many holes in my wall back home that I would punch. I would punch holes yeah, in the wall. <laughs> I'd punch so many holes. I was I was a pretty pissed off kid, you know. I was always looking to argue with people. You know, <laughs> I, I was always I was always angry. Such a nice guy, Trey. It's like yeah. hard for me to think like that. But I mean, I was the same way. Oh, yeah, yeah, me too. And it's interesting, but I think it. Don't you think it takes that to actually make true, like, real change? Because you can't be. You have to be that mad about the situation. I think. Yeah, I agree. Because some people can just be okay with it. They finally go. No. Well, this is just the cards and the hands I'm dealt, and I just roll so with it. Most people do that. Yeah. And most people <laughs> do do that. And then some people are just so fucking pissed about it that. Their fucking wall looks like Swiss cheese. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I mean that. I think that. Um, or your bicycle's messed up. Oh yeah, Dude, yeah. The story, story I talked so about. Funny. Oh yeah, I'll tell it real quick, just because we got we we have no time limit. Um, <laughs> so this kid came to my house. You might. Have, I don't know if you heard this from Cole. This is good. Amazing. So this kid came to my house. He was way bigger than me. In my house, my trailer, and I spent. There is up behind my trailer. I tried to go take a picture of it, but it's not there anymore. Last time I was at home, the trailer's gone, but I thought maybe the hoop would still be there. Once again, I thought I was I thought I was going to get a ride for basketball. Now, I average like I don't know zero point four points a game, and like th yeah, there's no one recruiting me. You got way more love than I did, Cole. But I spent it once again hours shooting jumpers, fucking broken jumper. Like I mean, I spent so much time in the rain and the snow. Like, and I just applied that all the weightlifting when I realized I was going to be my path. But, um, I remember getting this, I didn't have my own hoop and it was on grass, like some Larry Bird shit. I thought, well, I'm going to be out here like the fucking sh <laughs> shot whisper, fucking making threes from all over the place, which also didn't happen. <laughs> but anyway, so I find this hoop that's actually, it's like cast iron and it's smaller than a regular hoop. So I thought, okay, if I can ice these, I could tell it just, I don't even know. It was really old. I found it like in the fucking woods or something like up on my house. <laughs> So there, I put this pole on the ground. I got I got this hoop all constructed, and this kid who lived up the street, who had way more money than me, had a nice hoop, had all that. He comes and he rips it fucking down. He just rips it down because he could he could dunk. And I don't even know if it's ten feet. I mean, I was ragtagging this stuff. He fucking rips it down and like is like hanging on it, and like fucking jackhammering it, and I'm like ready to kill him, like literally ready to kill him. And so and I, there's no way I could beat him up. He's way bigger. He was two years older than me, and he was a big kid on top of it. And so I'm probably like in, I couldn't drive yet. I might've been like in ninth grade or eighth grade, right? Seventh or eighth grade. So anyway, I walk back down and he just got a brand new mountain bike that his parents bought him. I mean, it's probably like a 300. Well, I know exactly how much it costs. I'll tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> so I see it parked by the trailer, right by where the picture I always show me and my dad underneath the awning. And I just, the rage of this kid ripping my hoop down was so hot that I felt like my face was gonna fucking fly off. So I just wheel this thing right out to the street and I just start pile driving it onto the pavement probably a thousand times. As hard as I, f I'm talking like WWE, <laughs> I'm fucking taking it up over my head like a, like a ball slam. Yeah. <laughs> Boom, like this, right? And I'm, and I'm taking out every aggression of this point of my life on this bike. And then I just leave it in the middle of the fucking road because I'm like, I don't even care. I'm out. So I go in my house and I, I'm fucking, you know, hot. And I tell my mom, like, or she wasn't home then, but when she came home later, because I, I peek out the window. And when this dude figured out what I did to his bike, I see him trying to wheel it home. But it's the, the, the wheel's not true. Both yet. the wheels are not true. So it's, <laughs> he's trying and it's cool <laughs> like this. And so, you know, what the, the fucked up part is that his parents made a big old fucking stink about it. I end up having to pay $220 for his fucking bicycle. But nothing ever happened for my shitty hoop that I put together that he ripped down. And things like that are what made me think, like, this motherfucker's not going to be able to hold my jock when I'm, when I'm, when, because here's the thing with high school, right? It's a bunch of fucking phony bullshit. And once you actually fucking restart the game, the slate's clean. Doesn't matter. I mean, it still has matter resources. And I guess that if your family's kind of throwing things down. But at the end of the day, I was like, once I get out of this joint, I'm going to whoop everybody's ass. Yeah. I just knew it. And I think like all, you know, whether they were nice to me or not nice to me, it didn't really matter. I didn't really care. There's no clicks. There's no fucking hierarchy. There's, it's a clean slate. I'm a whoop everybody. I tell AG that all the time. It doesn't matter if this dude's cool right now. Let's see what the fuck happens in three years from now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I fucking smoked everybody. <laughs> but it's like those moments of like 
that is like ingrained in your mind no that question. literally just like takes you like your mission like what you're about and puts it like at another like another level because they can't understand like what you're trying to even do no it's can't do it yeah. dude I'm it was on. i just was so pissed that i tried so hard for the base level thing that this guy was given now he can't change who his parents are and his parents weren't even rich they just had probably twice the amount of money me and i didn't have very much yeah. but it's like i was so frustrated and it would have been so easy for me to be like lightweight criminal at that point to be honest with you like to fucking go grab a fucking ball bat and like basically break his fucking leg that's what i wanted to do and those are the things why i punch fucking holes in the walls dude when i was 15 years old and i still have the bag still hanging at the office i i, I made my dad or my mom take me to go buy a boxing bag because of that aggression. I didn't know how to box, but I know I just needed something to get out the anger that I had of my situation. And that's why that the bag has people's names on it still. There's blood all over from when I was a kid. I didn't have any boxing gloves. I've been banging on things since I was 15. Yeah. You know, and I don't feel like that all the way anymore. But those things never really leave you, bro. Yeah, for sure. Like, whenever I would say up until I was about a junior in high school, like, if I was angry... I would, it was like all physical aggression. Like I, I was like in a ton of fights. Like I would fight like literally anyone if they'd like get underneath my skin. I'd just go like, let's just settle right now. But it wasn't until, you know, I was like starting to like develop my craft where like if someone like really wanted to step at me and like would make me mad, I would just go do more fucking drills. Mm -hmm. I would just like keep doing that. You take it out there. I would Positive. take it out there. But like the weight room did that for me. Yeah, which is the weight room, but also that because it was like I I I'm going to fucking prove these people wrong. I'm just not like I'm going to show them in a different way. But there's like one story kind of like yours that sticks out in my mind. It was uh as going into my junior year of high school, um, and the school board wanted to shut down like Bellsville Bellsville mm -hmm. High School. So I was going into my junior year, and. Uh, this was whenever like I was I was already visiting a lot of schools like up up until junior year going like all these camps were like really trying to like put myself on another pedestal and they wanted to shut down the school and I was like well you know fuck like if there's no football then like I don't know what I'm about to do so I had to like make like the hard decision to transfer schools to another school that's like it was the closest one to me it's 30 minutes down the road Barnesville yeah and at the time everyone in Bellsville fucking hated Barnesville was it a rival Cole it wasn't – we never played each other, but I think it was just so close, close that yeah. it was like, you know, what the fuck are you doing? So – What year did you make that switch? 2014. Like what year were you? Were you a junior? It was end of sophomore going into junior okay. year. Okay, gotcha. So they were shutting down the school, and I was like, I, I have to do this. But at that time, like mentally, I was thinking like I'm going to leave. Literally all the kids I grew up with, like my best friends, like all that shit. And, you know, I was just like – it, it was literally, like, a kind of a spontaneous decision, and I just, like, fucking went. I just went, saw it, checked it out, and I remember, like, the, the head coach, Matt Johnson, came up to me, and he's like, so, are you coming here? And I was like, well, yeah. And then I remember the next day, he brings me in this fucking box of, like, clothes, and he, and he sets it down, and he says, like, like if you're fucking going to come here, like, you're, like, a part of it. And I remember going home and like telling all my kids like like telling all my friends like I'm going to Barnesville and uh like they basically like fucking like they literally like wouldn't talk to me for like an entire year and like I I had like the entire like community of Bellsville like all these old people and like all my friends like dads basically fucking like not even talk to me and like not even acknowledge me and I remember I went to like a basketball game to support like my nephew who was playing and all the fucking, like, all my friends that I grew up with, like, st like stood, like, right in front of me and talked shit about me, like, without to my face, but behind me. Sure. And, like, saying, like, all this fucking, like, dumb shit. And I remember I went home and I took everything I had at Bellsville. I put it in a fucking box and I threw it outside. And I told my mom, like, I, like, fucking burn it. I never want to see it again. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, like, I, like, literally haven't looked back. And it took fucking, like, basically two years for my, like, friends, like, to Come be around. my friends again. Damn, Cole. Wow. They ain't got a fucking shot at fucking coming at you, boy. <laughs> Which, yeah. Like, obviously, you can tell it's, like, hard to talk about, but of course. that was, like, one Probably of the Probably never really talked about it, Cole. That's, That's why like, it's hard to talk about. That was, like, literally one of the moments that, like, it was, like, a game changer. Like, it literally, like, everything that was running through my mind at that point, I had to fucking full send it. Yeah. And, like, there was no looking back. Fuck yeah. Damn, bro. Is that one coming? Fuck. No. But, that, but so, yeah. you know... 
just like I said before, I don't know any of this stuff, Cole. Because when would you say, hey, gee, I'm going to go share, I'm going to share this. I mean, we might have got to that point, but when these type of topics come out like this, you, you don't know the pent up emotion that's going to happen. Like you starting off the show with what you said, like when people hear that, they go, fuck, you know what? Maybe there's seven or eight things that I fucking never really thought about how much I hated about one of my parents or my uncles or why, why am you know why am i just okay with that and why and they might be repeating the process and not even realize it that's the thing i think that's a problem right cole you put in your your look when you put your flag in the sand like that when you're that age high school clicks and friends it feels so overwhelming because that's the little world you live in and then when you get out of it and you realize you're like all that shit's so fucking stupid. But the fact that those people were acting that immature to a kid yeah, is fucking I think ridiculous. It was like, I was like 16. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous, bro. Kids are brutal. Kids are brutal. Can't be. It's fucking ridiculous. Man. Man, we getting heavy out here. <laughs> what do you think, Trey? <laughs> I mean, fucking props to Cole, bro. I know. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just like vibing with that deep of stuff, bro, is awesome. Because that... And as you start to say it out loud, too, if there's a healing component to it, Cole. I mean, we all friends here, yeah. all the members. And it's like, it's nothing I really talked about. It. The only person I've ever shared that with is, like, my, like, best friend, Tristan. Sure. But, like, my mom, she kind of saw it, but she never, like, I never, like, vocal like vocalized, like, what, sure. was, what was actually, like, like, going through my mind. Man. Fucking real, bro. Yeah. It's real, real. Let's go. What do you think, Danny? Yeah, I mean, I was kind of. I, I no one wants to follow that up, Cole. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I mean, like, well, nah, if, yeah, if we're talking about, about, about if we're talking about why, like, like that's that, about, like that was well, no, like, but literally that's what it. the that why was, is that supposed shaped to be. Me. Yeah, like when I think about like when I was like in disbelief on what my my mom was basically supporting us on, I was just like, I remember I was like 15. I, I look at her W two and I was like, how the fuck are we living on this? And I know how like we weren't basically. She was always late on the rent, and like if I think back. About mom being late on $150 a month rent. Like, it feels like a different vortex. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah. I remember, like, even, like, probably two, three years into personal training when my cell phone bill was more than that. I was just like – so I already started to see, as you guys are, that those mild changes to somewhat drastic changes that, oh, okay, I'm on the path for this to be real different. What's so encouraging – and what what happened was the steadiness and what I'm seeing from you guys and what I did is it's not just one big event. It's never been just one big event. Now, there's been events that I've had to step up to and there's been events that I've not killed it at. But at the end of the day, it was once again, just that consistent and drawn on all these things that you guys have shared to get you through. And then, bang, I, I looked. I remember one day I was doing something and I was just like. This is so wildly different right now. And this is like four or five years in, kind of like the level you're at, Cole, right now, just getting that out of college age. And I'm like, even if I just stayed here, I fucking whooped everyone's ass. And I've changed some things. <laughs> I can relate to that so much, yeah. You're already probably feeling that yeah. way, ain't you? Like, I for mean, like for example, I just think back to like high school or middle school, you know. you know, for, I know, I know it's like this for a lot of people, but lunch at school is the only meal today. Yeah, and you go home and there's not sh there's not shit to eat, <laughs> yeah. like literally nothing in the cabinets. And I think I think now and your mom's working, and my mom my mom's at work. Yeah, <laughs> and I think now like now whenever I want to go to eat, I can afford to literally just go out to eat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that like was you so really love Chipotle. <laughs> I love yeah. I love Chipotle, <laughs> but like that's it's something that I don't take for granted honestly at all. Yeah, <laughs> but that's part of also the way you operate. Um, a lot of you guys, I talked about this before, the way you guys operate really like below your means and very strategic and that's that's something that is a part of the generation thing yeah. compared to my, the guys my age it just is and it really uh, i think trey between cole and trey's age mostly danny danny's age that 30 ish that's still kind of hung on from the what kind of how we operated yeah. but that right there is really encouraging and and to appreciate as much as just being able to go do that <laughs> yeah that's big. You know, one thing what's wild for me as we're sitting in a, in a house that I bought as an investment property, I remember this build up whenever I was a kid. I was probably like, see, maybe like sixth grade, 
or yeah, I think it was like sixth grade because sixth or seventh grade because we had living with my grandparents, and my mom was trying to go through all these different programs to get funding so she could buy a house. And I'm talking like, it was like two bedroom, small, like you know, um, one story. I think I think I remember it being like thirty two thousand or so, something like that, twenty seven thousand, something small. And I remember there was this unbelievable buildup for it. And that she was doing all this stuff and she was trying to take extra shifts at work and she was and like we thought we was just moving in there like because we're little we don't or, or little enough and then then her not getting it and then we had just been kicked out of an apartment you know a year before that and had to move with my grandpa and just remembering like that i remember her trying truly her hardest and i remember her putting everything into it and then her not seeing it go through but then how she rebounded from that because she had no choice. Mm-hmm. She literally had no choice. My dad's not there. You know, she still has to support us. She's, li- you know, she's living with her parents as a, I don't know, 30 year old mom. Like I just watched those things and I just remember her being so strong and the things she was going through. And I was just like, God, like when some of these things in my life happen now, once again, it's like, I'm excited to execute them, but there's a different level of understanding of how how much gratitude I have to even be in those positions. It, it, it like it literally is mind blowing, and that's why I think probably as I get older, I have even more of a passion to do what we're doing here today, because there's got to be light bulbs we can turn on for people, especially the people who are already here. They're here because they want to get better. And that story you just told, that honesty came out, coming out the gate. And honestly, Danny, I think there's a lot of people that feel like, well, my shit isn't as crazy as these two guys. But also, I mean, you could have just continued that same. In your family, you're the crazy one. Yeah. The That's a black fact. sheep. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. The black sheep in an entrepreneurial way. Isn't that yeah. funny? Yeah. Like, But that's how it's looked upon. Mm-hmm. So it's like I think there's a way that someone can identify with every one of our stories. Yeah. And they're already here because they want to get better. They just don't realize what we're really about to hopefully uncover for them. Yeah, and just like having the right, like the right people on the bus, like in your life and in your mm-hmm. inner circle and everything. Because like, I mean, I feel like I should share a story now. Shit, please. After that. I mean, obviously you were pretty close to it. Yeah. But uh, I mean, for me, it was a divorce. So this past year, geez, I like get the years mixed up now. Man. Yeah, sorry. Right. But basically, last September was when it was like official, but like. Your own divorce. Yeah. So that was easily, no question about it, the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with. Um, yeah. I don't even know really where to, to start. But, like, if you're in a, re- a relationship or whatever and you, you start to feel this sense of jealousy, envious, or envy, stuff like that, which I didn't feel at the uh, the earlier part of it. But then as I progressed with, like, with Corey coaching, everything was going, you know, well. Um, that's when I started to feel a weird, you know, distancing. Mm -hmm. It started, there started to be this like distance between us. Um, and it only got worse as she stayed in her situation and was unhappy with it and was unwilling to do what it took to get out of that situation or there was work on herself or change it. I remember we had a bunch of conversations around that time and you know, there's literally nothing you can, I mean, you can give suggestions or you can, you know, be there for them when they need it. Or if they ask you for things like you can provide that support, but in the end, you're not going to change someone's habits and routines. And <laughs> uh, there's, there's just no way you're going to do that. They, they have couldn't have been lining up more opposite of yours at that time. Yeah. Which you never anticipated out the, out the gate. None of us did that no. knew your ex-wife. Yeah. And then pretty much it was like the classic, like just like little things. Or they seem little, just kept getting swept under the rug where you know I would ignore it um, and then it just kind of just got bigger bigger and bigger and then like you know obviously there was like a climax of things that kind of s- set the spiral downward um, but when it the first thing happened uh, I won't get into like super detail but um, when the first thing happened that really set it off where I like actually moved out that's when like I didn't really know what to do. Like, I didn't really, I was actually informed from a family member, my brother, um, because I had no idea otherwise what had happened. 
and so that day I, you know, t- got my stuff, you know, like moved out, and then it was like, you're just sitting there trying to make sense of what's going on, like, because you have no idea what what's going on. Like, obviously, you start questioning yourself, what did I do to, you know, to cause this, you know, all this stuff, and so from that point, it was a boxing up of emotion because you don't. I didn't really know. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do was talk to people, let alone my yeah. mom. Because just, again, she's someone that's going to ask a lot of questions, and I'm like, I don't have any answers for you. And so I kind of just just internalized everything, and then that felt pretty horrible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so it was like trying to find an active outlet, and then from that point it was just a game of trying to, uh, like, I wanted to, I wanted to be proactive, and I wanted to basically iron-proof my mind. So, like, tr- I had some experience with with like daily uh or like stoicism and stuff like that but that was when i really like dove head first just i just needed to and then just like writing never really was a writer before but those two i would attribute a lot of the uh you know progressing forward and getting out of it to that um and then it slowly like it doesn't seem like it that was the first time i could see like the clear fork in the road of how like when people go through shit like that is like it'd be so easy to become like to you know alcoholic you know you'd be a drunk in five like, seconds bro oh my god it, w- it was so easy to see the lot that was a fine line and i'm like well you either have you literally have this way or that way and i think having strong figures around me helped um and everything and obviously the support of my immediate family but like they didn't really know what to say because they obviously haven't gone through it but um, yeah, it was not a not a great situation, but it does get better. So if you you are going through a situation like that, it obviously doesn't seem like it's gonna get better. You're not gonna find anybody again. Um, but like literally, I couldn't have gone a complete more of a 180 now with oh, the girl. You're so happy but, now. Yeah, it's like just the supportive system around and like you know genuinely, keyword genuinely being happy for the other person. And understanding what you guys want and then making sure that you're like aligned or at least on the same page like they don't have to love every single thing you're doing but they have to like at least try to understand and if not oh yeah Ray never really all the way understood me yeah. but she supported everything yeah but don't ignore the red flags if there's any or if they are communicate them over communicate them squash them <laughs> like well and you know obviously I was in heavy contact with you daily when you were going through this and what I got to say is that what he said about the daily stoic and sto- stoicism he doubled down on your on his personal development material because he needed it whether some people do that with the bible or a different type of material whatever it is they run towards because they they're they're looking for the stillness they're looking for ways to make sense of it or to educate themselves into into just try to feel better and i mean you did that by research and studying putting time in and then the ruck stuff i think helped a ton too yeah like completely like um diving into it and just trying to like you know they're all about like controlling what you can control and i'm like there's very little but like you know and then just dealing thank god we didn't have like a house or kids or stuff like that to you know make it even more complex but just standing my ground because Mm -hmm. i would consider myself in the compassionate you know for sure. camp for sure so like i didn't want to be like total like you know f you bye so at the same time i had to end up like putting my foot down and being more firm and i'm so happy i did that because yeah i was trying to be your voice of reason on some of that <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah he de- yeah Corey definitely helped i mean that was an interesting morning after old school telling you that yeah. You didn't see that one coming. So. No, well, but you know what, though? When I'm working with people this closely, I need to know what they're going – if there's some serious shit going on, and then there's spots where I was able to help you from time to time. You know, not that I had ever gone through it. I went through it as a kid. Never yeah. went through it personally. But the fact of, like, you know, look, when there's heavy emotions involved, you're not always going to think clearly. You need yeah. somebody that cares about you that's not your family, if it's possible, to be able to say, look, Danny. I, I remember saying this is one of the main – you were like – I'm about to have coffee with her name this morning with my wife. I was like, bro, you need to fucking clip this shit. Like, yeah. you're not like, there, you know, you already knew it was over. Mm-hmm. You knew you weren't happy. You knew that she wasn't compatible. I was like, you can't be having coffee with your wife. Like, meaning like that's the only time you saw her that week. 
yeah, and you were so. like, I did just say that out loud. Then I was like, yeah, motherfucker, you said it out loud. And it, for your own fucking mental health and for us growth, time to, time to get it going. It's not that easy. Yeah. But I remember having that conversation, and I didn't really want to say that to you. But when you said it to me yeah. out loud, I was like, Danny, you hear yourself, bro? I think that's what I said. Like, yeah. is it, I said, did you hear what you just said to me? Yeah. I mean, it's I, fucking hard. There, there was one of the hardest conversations we had was, like, when we met in the morning. This was when we were, like, trying to figure things out. But, like, that was when, like, we were, like, talking, just talking. And then, like, I think we both realized it was, like, it was, like, fucking done. Like, yeah. it was definitive. And then I just, like, basically couldn't, like, couldn't really talk after that. And then, like, left and, like, went to, uh, it was, like, on the west side of Columbus, like, River Road, mm-hmm. kind of up there. And it was, just, like, all the emotions just hit a climax. And, like, I just fucking was bawling like a fucking child in the car. Yeah. And then it was, like, literally, like, ten minutes straight. I just, like, it was uncontrollable, couldn't do it, just sitting in my car. and But, like, it was needed, like... It's okay to be fucking vulnerable, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, of so course. Was, uh, I felt much better after that, but oh. anyway. <laughs> Trey, you're learning all kinds of stuff Jeez. today, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you got to cry. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I'll be honest, I probably cry like once a month. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah. dude, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I probably cried like 10 times on the last podcast. <laughs> None of them I ever anticipated I was going mm-hmm. to. Yeah. I mean, that's why I think like. Or like the video I did on my Instagram about some of the social injustice. Yep. Like I didn't plan on being emotional. Did you think I wanted to look like soft in any way? Yeah. But that's just what happened. And uh, it was because people I cared about were hurting, including I, Trey. Yeah. You I, know what I'm saying? So it was like some real shit. Exactly. Just like the stuff you talked about. You know? I think that's part of the some of the problems in our like our culture is like you're supposed to be this like macho masculine person yeah. and then like you're kind of like look down on if you're not yeah. so like hey i'm still a bad motherfucker but yeah. you know sometimes that shit happens <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fucking i like i love to see it's the okay percentage of dudes that want to get up under the fucking bars i got under yeah you know what i'm saying mm. they were way more scared to cry you know what i'm saying yeah. so <laughs> 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 that's a fucking fact yep. <laughs> they'd be like no i'm trying to get that 700 pound squat g i yeah. ain't trying to cry in front of people <laughs> Oh man, is there anything else? I mean, this was a, an amazing episode. I mean, I don't know how much more we can add to yeah, that, yeah. but it's like if y'all don't know, we vowed it at this yeah. point from these stories. Could have manufactured that one. <laughs> Unbelievable! I appreciate you guys sharing that kind of stuff. That was fucking awesome. And this, me and Trey, well, me and Trey were talking about this morning at the gym. He's like, you know, we're always super prepared here at Corey G Fitness dot com for our content. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so our preparation meeting was G. What are we talking about today? I was like, uh, I think we we're talking about our whys. He's like, around lifting? I'm like, no. We need to talk about real life shit. He's like, okay, I got that. <laughs> yeah. And then we Done. was off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hit the button. Yeah. Hey, no, <laughs> pretty good. So, all right, I'm going to go through so each, everyone knows where they can find you guys too. Cole, where's, what's your handle? Uh, Instagram and Twitter, at XSUSAC, X-S-U-S-A-C. Graphic Gangster. Uh, Instagram and Twitter, at Trey Speed. Fast dude. And just Instagram, dwalter03. You might have to change yours to something else. Yeah, maybe like small arms. <laughs> small arms, yes, Danny. Small, small arms, arms, Danny. Yeah, I know you like that. I'm Corey G. Jit, 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 jit. You did. Roundtable, episode two. We're done. Later. Peace out.